I don't have a cat. That's not good. Be right back. There. Much better. Apparently my cats were having fun watching my housemate play Diablo 3. Yes! I can kill all the demons with my paw! Good evening, Internet. Uh, in case if things look a little weird, I'm currently using my webcam to record this rather than one of my cell phones, so... Hopefully this doesn't sound too bad. Unfortunately, that means I have to do things like keep my computer on and stuff like that, so... It might not be the greatest of quality. Let me know how it looks. And also, I have to manually synchronize the audio with the video. There's a 7 millisecond delay that I currently have set that seems to be good enough, but my brain keeps thinking that they're not synchronized. So, either way, let me know. Today I wanted to go back to one of the things that people liked about my videos, namely reviewing things. And today I'm going to be reviewing my Nexus 7. This isn't my Nexus 7. So I wanted to go back to reviewing things. Um, people liked me reviewing my laptop. It was apparently very informative and by far the most popular video I've ever done. So I thought I would review something else. My phone. This is a Nexus 5, um, purchased directly from the Google Play Store. I bought this, uh, it would have been about a month and a half ago, maybe? A little bit less. So this isn't a very old phone. I have the 32 gigabyte version of the Nexus 5. I keep trying to call it a Nexus 7. For those of you that are unfamiliar, this is an Android smartphone, specifically one commissioned by Google. It's not technically made by them. This is actually made by LG. Uh, logo's there. Uh, I don't think that's viewable at all. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I have to watch the screen over there. It would have made more sense for me to have like a monitor behind this webcam, but I don't plan ahead, apparently. So, um, this is a 1080p smartphone, so the screen is the same screen resolution as my laptop, screen resolution of my desktop, screen resolution of pretty much everything I own at this point is 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1200. A LTE device, uh, specifically I have a GSM model. There is only a GSM model for the Nexus 5. By GSM, I'm... well, there's an acronym. I'll, I'll put the acronym over there. Um, I am a T-Mobile subscriber, so what I go for in phones tends to match what people in Europe would go for, and people generally outside of the United States. If you use Verizon or Sprint, although this phone can actually handle Sprint, but Verizon, Sprint, or US Cellular, or any of the various phone companies that use one of their networks, this phone does not work for you, and I'm sorry. It sucks to be you guys, because Verizon... Verizon's dumb. Anyway, so about this phone. Um, the reason why I'm reviewing it today is because it's faulty. So, normally I record my vlogs with this. The camera is not the greatest video camera in the world, but it still records 1080p. It's still better than this webcam that I'm using right now. If you notice, this video is 720p. The webcam technically handles 1080p, but it doesn't handle it well. I think it drops frame rate down to like 15 frames per second or something like that, even though it's not supposed to. Looking at you, Logitech. Anyway. Um, I don't really use this as a standard photography camera. I basically just take quick snapshots of things so I can read them. You know, like, if you're trying to look, say, for instance, at some serial number underneath a computer, and rather than trying to crane your head around for a desktop, I just use my cell phone camera and take a flash picture of it. And for that respect, it works fine. And I've taken some pretty decent pictures outdoors with my camera also. But, well, it's a cell phone camera. I'm not going to be doing the greatest things in the world with it. I still prefer my regular camera, but that's me. Video camera-wise, this is a significantly better camera than my previous Galaxy Nexus. Um, they both record 1080p video. They both do very similar things when it comes to video apps because, well, they're both Nexus devices. I'll get to the software in a bit. But, well, it looks better on the Nexus 5. Unfortunately, what doesn't work better would be the audio. The Nexus 5 seems to have noise canceling features that don't work. Um, you actually need a, or at least used to need, you might still need it, a patch um, to load onto the patch in order to get the video recording to actually use the noise canceling features of your own phone. And when it does so, it does it poorly. I don't know if you've noticed in some of my vlogs 
Um, the audio kind of sounds a little choppy, like if it was silent and then the moment I open my mouth, right before I say something, you hear noise, and then I say something and then you stop hearing noise. That's not me doing post-processing. In fact, I tried to do post-processing to eliminate as much of that as possible. That's actually the camera's noise, or the phone's noise-canceling capabilities cutting in and out for no reason. It's bizarre, and I kind of wish I had the option of disabling noise cancellation. That way, I can just edit it in post. It's annoying. It takes a long time, but at least it works. And my tablet actually records better video than my phone. It's kind of strange, but I don't exactly have a tripod that works for my tablet. So, speaking of front-facing camera, front-facing camera on this seems to be fine. It's not the greatest of qualities. It's 720p and really looks like it's a bad 480p stretch job. But I've also never seen a cell phone that has a halfway decent front-facing camera. That could just be my experience, inexperience with smartphones. Don't know. So, um, how does it work as a phone? really well, actually. Um, I do have some problems with it, but in general, my old Galaxy Nexus over here used to have constant problems with calls being dropped and things like that. Most of that was my cell tower nearby. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a T-Mobile customer. As a result, I don't have the greatest service. I live in Madison. The line of coverage for Wisconsin basically cuts through part of Madison, and I'm very close to that edge line, so while I do have LTE signal in my house, not very strong, and one of the towers used to cut in and out, and my Nexus 5, I've never had that problem. Now, to be fair, they did fix the tower right around the time that I migrated new phones, and right before I was having too many problems with my Galaxy Nexus. But at the same time, I've never heard somebody complain about how I sound, both using my Bluetooth headset and speaking directly from the handset. I have not had too many problems understanding other people. It works fairly well in that regard. Unfortunately, there is a glitch with the Nexus 5, and it's one that I've experienced once over the course of, like, four days. Um, apparently, and this is only happens on some Nexus 5s, if you have an LTE signal and Wi-Fi is on, you cannot receive or make phone calls. I don't get it. Um... Basically, the fix for it was to disable Wi-Fi and I can make phone calls, and after several reboots and disabling Wi-Fi later, it seems to work fine again. I mean, I'm bouncing back and forth between Wi-Fi and LTE all the time, so I don't know what caused it. And that does bother me, because cell phones are kind of meant to be able to make and receive phone calls. That's the primary use of a phone. Otherwise, I'd basically just have an over-glorified 5-inch tablet, or 4.0 whatever, 4.95 inch or whatever the size of my phone is. This is a fairly light phone. Um, you could look at stats and it's a, roughly comparable to my Galaxy Nexus, at least what it feels like in my hands. My Nexus 5 feels slightly lighter than my ne Galaxy Nexus, but to be fair, my Galaxy Nexus has removable battery and back cover and all that other fun things, and the Nexus 5 doesn't, which is obnoxious. Seriously, Google, knock it off. Why? I know it's all thin and light and, you know, people like it because it looks cool, but unfortunately it means that I can't replace the battery without voiding the warranty. And, well, or replace anything else on this without voiding the warranty, which is part of the reason why you're sending me a new phone today. I'll get to my problems when I'm in the software section. Let's see, what else to talk about? So, um, let's see if I can get this so here's the back of the phone. Oh, there we go. I have the white version, mostly to differentiate from Critter's black version, otherwise the 32 gig model. Uh, let's see. Front of the phone looks like this. I'm currently running stock everything, so this is the default everything on the phone. Ooh, you can see it's actually 8.19 p.m. Um, the screen looks quite nice. I haven't really had any problems with the screen. Uh, let's see. This includes the Google Now launcher, which is stock for all Nexus devices, and also you can install on uh, Android 4.4. This is running the latest version of Android. This is a Nexus device. So the main thing that separate Nexus devices from everything else are, well, 
two things really. One would be the fact that Google's the one that commissioned it. I've heard rumors that they won't be commissioning too many more of these type of phones and instead going with the Google Play edition versions of phones, which are basically the same types of things but not specifically commissioned by Google. And two, the software is a stock install of Android. No OEM stuff, no per carrier stuff, no special software installed. There is absolutely nothing whatsoever special installed outside of what you get for normal everyday Android, which for me is awesome. I really don't like how all of these, like, HTC has Sense, um, Samsung has, oh, what is it called? I can't remember now. TouchWiz, there we go. Samsung has TouchWiz, um, lots of other providers have other different interfaces, they have all their own crapware bundled in, and ugh, I don't like it. And this doesn't. This is a simple, ordinary phone. I can install whatever I want on it, I can replace the firmware on it, I can easily unlock the phone, I can easily uh, load custom ROMs onto it, I can easily do whatever I want to the phone, which I have. Um, I primarily run Paranoid Android for my everyday use. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Uh, maybe I'll cover... actually, that's a good idea. When I get my next phone in, I'll cover what ROM modifications are and things like that. That's a great vlog idea, actually. Anyway, as I've sort of mentioned a few times, this is actually a defective phone right now. So, when I record my vlogs, and I've mentioned this several times outside of actual vlogs, but when I record my vlogs, I tend to not delete things on the phone. As a result, it kind of fills up. I only have a 32 gig of storage, and eventually when I record enough time in 1080p, well, it fills up entirely. I was down to about three gigabytes free, and I went, well, okay, let me move things off the phone. I already had copies of most of this on my computer at the time, but better safe than sorry. I move everything from the phone to the computer, and then load it up on my file server, my file server being backed up on a nightly basis, and just go from there. And that's when it locked up. So, there seems to be a problem with my phone. I don't know if it's just my phone. I don't know if it's a defect with all Nexus 5s. I have absolutely no idea where the defect is. I hope it's just my phone because I'm returning it for this purpose. Basically what happens is that if I try to delete files on the phone when I have enough stuff onto the phone, it locks up. So a move operation is simply copying files from one de source to a destination and then deleting from the source afterward. It copies all the files just fine. I have all of the videos that I recorded on my computer. There's been no problems with that. That's not a big deal. But they all stay on my phone, and the phone locks up. When the phone locks up, it's completely unresponsive. It has a black screen. I have to power it off, then power it back on again. That doesn't sound like that big of a deal, except for what happened Saturday. When I started trying to do the editing for the sex vlog that never ended up happening, I pulled up all of my videos off the phone, it locked up again, powered it off, powered it on, and it stuck there booting forever. I let it boot for two hours and it was still booting. So it basically, what happened was that my phone bricked. So a brick is when your phone turns into, well, a lot, about as useful as a brick. The idea being is that you can brick devices which cause them to be as useful as bricks and not do anything. In this case, this is what's called a soft brick or Something that you can actually change because it's a software problem, not literally frying the hardware of the inside of the phone. And as a result, I had to lose all of my data, all of my installed apps, my Google Authenticator, my everything, and wipe it in order to be able to use my phone again. So I do have problems with this phone, and I've sort of clued the name. Outside of my problem with the storage, which I'm going to operate on the assumption that's a fluke. I haven't read that anywhere else. Uh, the main problem that I have with it is the camera quality. The camera quality is crap. I mean, 1080p is nice, don't get me wrong, 1080p at 30 is kind of handy. The phone that this is based on, which is the LG G2, has a 4K camera, or 1080p at 60 frames per second, or everything much better, and what they did was that they decided to remove that in order to drive down the price of this phone. This is a very cheap phone for what it is. I don't think they should have scrimped so much on the camera. That was a bad move. The microphone especially. The microphone on this for camera purposes is terrible. Luckily I'm going to be replacing that. So you're going to see another video later on that's going to be me reviewing my new camcorder. Uh, let's see, what else do I not like about it? 
The data speeds are fine on it. Uh, using this as a phone is generally okay, but there seems to be a lot of software bugs. Uh, things along the nature of trying to bounce between wireless networks. Occasionally I'll start having glitches where it doesn't reconnect to a wireless network, or worse, it doesn't reconnect to a cell network afterward. That was constantly happening to me when I was leaving work. I'd be on Wi-Fi while I'm at work, leave work, and I have signal, but I have absolutely no data access whatsoever, and I need to power cycle the phone in order to be able to get access. Th these are beta problems. And I feel that Google rushed the software on this, and they haven't bothered fixing it, which bothers me. On the other hand, though, this is a very cheap phone. I did mention this before. So I don't have a contract with my cell phone provider. I don't like them. They never really work out financially in your favor. I'd rather just pay a whole bunch of money up front and a much cheaper plan. Overall, it ends up being cheaper. And with T-Mobile, they're kind of cheap to begin with. So as a result, I buy my phone straight out. So if I were to buy a Galaxy S5, that's, yeah, Galaxy S5, it would cost me $800. Not the free with contract stuff that you see at many providers or anything. No, it's $800. This is not exactly a cheap phone. Um, let's see, the LG G2, which is what my Nexus 5 is based off of, is $500. For 32 gig, I believe it is. I'm sure somebody will correct me on the prices, but this is generally what I'm thinking about. But this phone, on the other hand, is... Three, I think this version was 350 Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was the $350 one. The version with 16 gig of space was 300 but... Well, I already mentioned that I ran out of space on this, so obviously a 32 gig version was the best version. For that price, uh, my choices are basically that phone, a Moto X, or a used phone. Or other budget phones that have, like, 480p screens and really bad features with a whole bunch of bundled crapware and yeah this is a really good phone as a phone um, assuming that the problem that I'm experiencing with my uh, phone is a fluke which I haven't read anybody else having this problem so I'm pretty sure it is I would in fact recommend this phone however if you are doing serious video recording if you are doing a bunch of bouncing between networks, I would say don't get this phone. So, if I were to rate this phone out of 10, 1 being the worst phone that I've ever had, 10 being the best phone that I've ever con conceive of that has every possible feature I could ever want, this is probably an 8, assuming that this bug that I'm experiencing is a fluke. However, as a camera, on the other hand, for. I hope you enjoyed this review, and, well, hopefully this video doesn't look like crap because I'm having to use a webcam for recording this. Bye, everybody!